and I'm just hearing this this parallel too of um you know with integration and like constantly consuming right like um courses and books and all of this stuff and just with without slowing down to integrate um and also surrender like both of those things require like we slow down and we get still right like giving ourselves time and space to integrate or or surrendering and trusting divine timing um and I think particularly for folks who are trauma survivors, that's like a really freaking tall order to slow down and to even be still and to surrender and to stop controlling and to stop taking a bunch of misaligned action of like, I just got to be by that next course. I just got to, you know, um, whatever it, it might be you know, um, make so much money or lose X amount of pounds or whatever next action um, that like our thinking mind or that societal programming is going to, tells us it's going to get us somewhere. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to like name that like stillness and slowing down. And it feels so like we're going to die if, if you have lived in survival mode. Um for so long and like couldn't stop running, couldn't stop hustling, couldn't stop, you know, and enjoy your life. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to a conversation of the Sovereign Society podcast, I have been so patient <laughs> to share and to have. And honestly, I've been following Cassandra Solano here for years. We were talking before we pushed record and both of us just feel like we've known each other for so long. And there's so many people out there who have like their business besties and like people they've never met in person, but we're still rooting for them and engaging on their posts and supporting them. And I think it's just such a, a beautiful gift that technology mm -hmm. has really brought forth to have these opportunities and to share these conversations and to connect. You know, I don't think we haven't been able to have this generations before. Mm -hmm. And I really do believe that has been the medicine and such a gift that is creating like a ripple effect in the world where we're really revolutionizing this place and anchoring heaven on earth because there's a lot more connection and community and just I see you you see me and we're in this together so Cassandra thank you so so much for being here with me today oh it's such a privilege to be here thank you for having me and I just got this image of um our web of community expanding just so beyond our immediate connections because of, you know, online and um, seeing this really broader web covering the world. And you're just speaking to my 12th health Sagittarius here. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Well, I'm a Gemini sun, so I, maybe that's why we, we get it. <laughs> but I just want to say, like, I've, I've watched the evolution of your brand over the years. I don't remember how I followed you, but it's definitely been quite some time. And I've seen you shift and evolve. And I want to talk about, you know, what was the intuitive hunch to really step into the space as the change doula and really mm -hmm. what that means to you and how you've seen uh, the shift, not just in your business and in your life, but also within your community since really stepping into this next evolution of mm -hmm. your brand. Because I think people, they can get so attached um, to a brand that they started, but as you evolve, so too does your brand. And that's something I tell my clients all the time. So I would love to hear how has that evolution really uh, strengthened your awareness and just your overall presence and drive to keep going. 
Yeah. So thank you so much. And again, like we've been following each other for years and this is so cool to connect. Um, and when I first started, um, I really started out my services focused around relationships, which is still primarily what I speak to and around. But as I was working with folks, um, I found that the, the actual like meat and potato stuff that we do behind the scenes, the stuff that really goes deep and gets this transformations has to do with so much more than just romantic relationships, right? We have our, our past wounds, our attachment wounds, um, uh, needing to support our nervous systems to heal. And as I worked with people over the years, I saw that this work didn't just impact their romantic relationships, but their romantic, their relationships with themselves, with spirit, with their kids, with their work. Um, I put a thing in my stories a couple weeks ago, um, like warning, if you work with me, you may change your job. <laughs> because <laughs> Even though I'm not a, a career coach, um, part of having thriving relationships is, you know, decreasing stress and setting boundaries in our life. And, and sometimes people realize like, I, I actually want to start a business or I need to change my job. So I can have more space in my life to date or to heal my marriage. Um, so it was last summer um, and I was feeling frustrated and I still am kind of walking this line in this space of putting out content and sharing a message that people who maybe don't really understand um, like, oh, I, what an attachment style is or how my nervous system impacts how I communicate in my relationship. Um, you know, just kind of those more like hot take kind of con content or the stuff that, you know, somebody that maybe really ha is new to personal development can understand. Um, and I think that it, it feels to me like a lot of social media has shifted into really rewarding and reinforcing a lot more of that kind of content. And it was last summer um, when I feel like I came to a place of, oh my gosh, but like what I do is so much deeper. <laughs> and the stuff that I actually do in session is so much more juicy and rich. And I wanted to share more of that and bring more of that to the forefront of my marketing and, um, and representing, you know, what, what I do and how I talk about myself and my work. I love that. And uh, when you're talking about the nervous system piece that, you know, I think that's where I feel like I first found you or was attracted to you because that's been a journey that really like initiated my spiritual quest uh, 10 years ago. I had a lot of childhood trauma. Um, I've talked, I've been a little more open talking about it because I had a lot of shame for a long time, especially I had a lot of sexual childhood trauma mm -hmm. and being sick, you know, the past year, especially them telling me that I've had a hormone imbalance. I, the doctors couldn't figure it out. But I was like, okay, I'm going to dive in deeper to this and understand that the unprocessed traumas that I had around my sexuality and my body mm -hmm. are affecting my hormones, which obviously affects my brain and all the other pieces of my body. And I think when you're talking about the nervous system and relationships, the most important thing that we need to remember is that if you're going to be present in your relationships, I don't care if it's romantic, friendship, business, what have you, you need to be present with that relationship with yourself first. Mm. And I think a lot of people, I know I've been there, like they were, they're afraid to go there and to discover and dive in deeper to see what's there because there's been that story for so long of a limiting belief or a doubt or an insecurity. And if you keep believing that, if it's been something rather recent or especially in the past, that's going to affect your nervous system. You won't be able to receive. And, you know, I think after I got struck by lightning, that was like an initiation for me to be like, Vish, you need to look at your nervous system. Like you can't mm. bypass this because that's what, 
it affected the most when I had so much unprocessed trauma, it, that was a weak spot. And so Mm -hmm. I think it's important to address that if you keep bypassing those deeper traumas and those, um, those hard times, you know, by love and lighting or like a good vibes only, or, you know, all of the bullshit new agey crap that is Mm -hmm. having you dissociate. Cause I've also, I was diagnosed with dissociative disorder, uh, when Mm -hmm. I was 18, um, because I had so much trauma, but if you keep disassociating and bypassing, you're not going to be doing anyone, your business, yourself, any, you're not going to be doing them a service. You're going to be doing a disservice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, your story is such a powerful example of the, you know, the need to do this work if you really want to live like an authentic, powerful, aligned life, you know, and, and if that's not what you're here for, and you just want to like work in a cubicle and grind out nine to five till you like die, um, you know, like that's, that's fine. And, and you don't have to say yes, you know, to getting support and going on this healing journey. Mm -hmm. Um, But I, you know, suspect most people that listen in to you are entrepreneurs or want to be and, it's such a sacred and triggering as fuck journey. (laughs) Like, um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, we, I think people don't realize how much you're signing up for. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know for me, and that's why, uh, you know, when people work with me, like I, you said, you've said two of my main like brand words, right. Alignment and thrive. Right my program thrive, I I know the importance because I've been there and I've lived it and I've mastered it. The importance of that deep ancestral healing, the importance of that deep inner child work, that importance of finding your sovereign embodiment, because if you bypass those things and you want to be a true leader, business owner, or I call my sovereign CEOs and lead with integrity, mm-hmm those pieces, they can't be bypassed either because then you're not sharing from a cup overflowing, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's cracks in that cup. And of course you can, you know, plaster it with a little bit of gold and make it stronger. I forget what the the Chinese um, Mm -hmm. treatment is, but when they were cracked glasses, they would treat it with gold to glue it. And you can have those pieces to make that chalice that sacred container that you are stronger. And I also believe that when you choose to build a conscious business and you're choosing to do that real work, because the Mm -hmm. deep work is the real work, not Mm -hmm. only will you clear out that karma, trauma, you'll shift the your DNA and your cellular memory, not just for you, but if you choose to have children mm-hmm. for the generations to come mm-hmm. and you can lead by example and lead with compassion to help other people and the things that you've been able to conquer and experience, which is what I love to help people find, it, the things you've been able to conquer and experience, you have the ability to build a business and lead with that integrity because you you can let your clients know, hey, I, I see you. I've been there. You're not mm-hmm. alone, but you have the ability to get through it, and I'm going to show you how. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that congruence and that integrity and, and being ethical in that way is, is so important to me, um, and the work that you do is so powerful um, in how you integrate really it's like a, a soul journey in building a business. Um, you know, it's, it really is a sacred experience. And, um, and I just want to loop back to, uh, that part where you talked about disassociating and, and that's a part of my journey where I did that too. Um, from probably 2006 to like 2016 ish. Um, I was also on that wheel of like going to many yoga classes and silent meditation retreats and reading every, you know, self-help book um, that I can get my hands on and um, thinking I could like spiritually transcend my emotionally abusive ex-husband's stuff um, 
And I really used a lot of that to, to bypass. And now folks come to work with me and they're like, oh, you're kind of woo. Like I'm woo. And I almost have to spend time when we first start working together in like just getting them back into their bodies because they've been disassociating with stuff for so long. And I'm like, I get it. Like no judgment. I did that for 10 years. And in some ways that was like all I had accessible to me and what I needed to do to survive and raise three little kids. Um, but you know, we don't have to, to live like that anymore. It's safe to, I love how you use the word embody, like come back to ourselves, come back to our bodies, um, and come into alignment. So, yeah. Again, my buzzword. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But I think too, with the going back and keep going with this dissociative, um, recently, during the Aries full moon, I mean, Aries new moon and the powerful portal that was, I burned all my self-help books. Wow. I burned all my false light self-help books that kept me in consciousness traps. Uh, Mm. I even have it on my real, on my old account because I started from fresh. I was like, I'm just starting this new beginning. And I, I was dissociating and by, spiritually bypassing for a long time. And I think the challenge that a lot of people forget to do, whether it be self-help books, like over-consuming spiritual teachings, uh, over-consuming psychedelic journeys and whatever, that going to retreat, retreat, doesn't, or also purchasing course after course after course without actually integrating yeah. The key word is integration because mm-hmm. that is how you embody what mm-hmm. you learned as well. But for me, like I was just so hungry to get to the destination that I just mm-hmm. kept going and going and going that I led to me being sick the past year. Mm-hmm. So I literally had no other chance but to slow down and to stop everything to integrate the 10 years of deep self-study, um, course, you know, investing mm-hmm. all whatever, trying to um, break free from what was going on mm-hmm. when the deeper message or the deeper medicine was like, you just need to slow down and get radically honest with yourself, forgive yourself and mm-hmm. give yourself what you needed that maybe wasn't experienced or received Um, Mm -hmm. when, especially if it's like your inner child stuff, which is what I had, like, what does your inner child need? And Mm -hmm. sometimes we think it can be so woo woo and like something so big and extravagant, but I think we forget about the simplicity of life as well. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. 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 I love all of this. Um, I mean, just thinking about you burning self-help books on like an Aries new moon of like Aries is, is like what Aries, you know? that energy I'm an Aries so I'm like yes like knowing yourself deeply trusting yourself deeply right and how that act that ritual was just such a a bigger step in like claiming your sovereignty and and you know kind of what we mentioned a few minutes ago about being in integrity like really walking our talk as like space holders right um so that just like lit up my whole body (laughs) I haven't seen that real I'll have to go see if you still have it up um but that is, that's incredible. Um, I just like, wow. Um, so I lost my train of thought because I was like so excited for Aries energy and <laughs> Aries like brain is just running fast right now. Um, I've got uh, Mercury and Aries too. So I'm like, what? Um, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah. But um, maybe that's why we were supposed to wait to have this conversation because yeah. we've been like, there's been multiple times where we've tried to have this conversation yeah. and it just wasn't yeah. and I was in alignment. so sick over the Aries new moon like that like I had I thought I had COVID but it wasn't but it felt like it it was awful um yeah but yeah. with that I wanted to say too it's like trusting the divine timing too and mm-hmm. I think that's the mm-hmm. other piece that I think um a lot of us if you have like I can speak from my experience having trust issues or like mm-hmm. Um, unprocessed like traumas in the past of like being on like the edge and my nervous system you know being in that mm-hmm. fight or flight as well 
I think when, when we can also give ourselves uh, the space to surrender and know that conversations, um, encounters, um, clients coming in, what have you, like it's all in a, there's a divine purpose and a divine plan to that as well. I think there's a, there can be a lot of resistance to, to that mm -hmm. because we feel like we need to over control um, because I think if people try to like micromanage and super try to control, it's because within themselves, like they're, they feel like they don't, they can't control themselves. Like there's mm. a situation or something like that as well. Um, mm. So I think that just really came through when you're talking about like surrender, or, like losing a train of thought kind of thing. It's like, <laughs> we just need to come back to this now and understand that there's something that's, that's coming. That's like a, this or something better kind of yes. experience as well. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Always I'm like, oh, well, I guess I wasn't supposed to say that thing. So moving on. <laughs> and, um, and I'm just hearing this, this parallel too of, um, you know, with integration and like co constantly consuming, right? Like um, courses and books and all of this stuff and just with, without slowing down to integrate um, and also surrender. Like both of those things require like we slow down and we get still, right? Like giving ourselves time and space to integrate or or surrendering and trusting divine timing. Um, and I think particularly for folks who are trauma survivors, that's like a really freaking tall order to slow down and to even be still and to surrender and to stop controlling and to stop taking a bunch of misaligned action of like, I just got to be by that next course. I just got to, you know, um, whatever it, it might be, you know, um, make so much money or lose X amount of pounds or whatever next action um, that like our thinking mind or that societal programming is going to tells us it's going to get us somewhere. And um, yeah. So I just wanted to like name that like stillness and slowing down and it feels so like we're gonna die if if you have lived in survival mode um, for so long and like couldn't stop running, mm -hmm. couldn't stop hustling, couldn't stop, you know, and enjoy your life. I have a client, she's 42 and she quit her job and is letting herself be supported by her partner. It's the first time in her life she hasn't worked since she was 15 and she's never taken more than like a day off for like, a doctor's appointment um and and right now it she's like three weeks into unemployment and like a lot is coming a lot of activation a lot of panic and anxiety is coming up for her because her nervous system is like what the fuck are you doing you need to get back to moving that pack of wolves is going to come get you and you're just laying out here in the sunshine being like a nice tasty feast right yeah. and um yeah so that I think that's something that is not talked about a lot in spirituality and new age. It's like, yeah, cool. Like be in the moment. But when, so for some of us, that doesn't feel accessible um, and definitely like not safe. And there can be a lot of shame around that. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, preaching to the freaking choir on that one, because that's, that's been what I've had to really um, conquer. Um, I felt like I've been in survival mode my entire life. Like I have, I've had childhood trauma that's gone back to age two and I mm -hmm. felt like I never had a break. Like it was just like a domino effect. Um, and I know that's why, like when I got sick, it was at, like brain scans are not showing that it's seizures. Thank God. I know straight up these have been exorcisms being cleared out mm -hmm. from my nervous system um, of like, this needs to go. And mm -hmm. it's, they've happened always right before my bleed. And that was, you know, having, like I said earlier, having such a history of sexual trauma um, mm -hmm. and repression and yeah dissociation in that like my body is like enough of this you need to release this out 
Mm-hmm. And so I think when it comes time to also um, recalibrate your nervous system, um, it's really important to be aware of the people you surround yourself with mm. um, to support you. And it's also very discerning and uh, interesting to see who you thought would be there and aren't. Mm-hmm. And I think it's also okay to feel comfortable to understand that people come in your life for a reason, for a season, or for a lifetime. And I don't know, I can, I just, for me, I just really have seen true colors of like, who are my real soul squad members. Um, I don't like to use the word tribe. I think it's just, it's an appropriation mm-hmm. word I don't appreciate. Mm-hmm. So, um, mm-hmm. but my soul squad, you know, seeing who's checking in um, and things like that. And I think that that takes like a, a surrender as well. Um, and also being aware of where is their codependency, um, like mm-hmm. patterns mm-hmm. as well. And to just get radically honest because, you know, mm-hmm. as a trauma survivor, and again, I think it's hilarious that I'm talking to you now because I've really come face to face to the last of the traumatic um, situations in my life. And now mm-hmm. here I am, like, here mm-hmm. comes the sun, like light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> talking Yay. with you. Um, <laughs> but I, I, like I said, I think like the biggest thing is to shift your perspective of realizing that those things happen for you and not to you. And Mm -hmm. the big piece that I like to help people understand is that whatever it is that you've been able to conquer, you have the ability to build a business around it and Mm -hmm. it will feel effortless uh, Mm -hmm. when you're building it because it's coming from a space of integrity and genuine uh, service, you know? And I also think that that's what's, uh, coming up a lot more. I think after quarantine where, you know, a lot of people had two years of like really deep self-reflection, which I think has been the blessing of it all. Um, you know, 2020 crystal vision was about getting the clarity on what's working, what isn't. And then are you willing to implement change and be part of the solution by first, Mm -hmm finding that solution within yourself and again, sharing from that overflow. So I'm curious to hear, you know, what, what you're seeing in terms of people uh, reclaiming their power back and stepping into their sovereign embodiment and really choosing to answer the call to be part of the solution. Yeah. um, I have worked with a lot of folks who are, you know, maybe they were already aware or they became aware in 2020 of, you know, all the systems that aren't working anymore that need to be torn down um, to imagine and envision, you know, new systems, new ways of being um, that center things like mutual aid, reciprocity, restorative justice, um, all, you know, changing our education system, whatever it might be. And, and even if it's just, somebody speaking up within their own family um, to in, to their parents, you know, who maybe have differing views or, or don't understand the whole picture and are just listening to one new source and getting one perspective on an issue. Um, and how important it is, again, for, for change makers, for people who do see all of this and care to do their inner work to learn how to regulate and resource their nervous systems, to, like you said, cultivate safe community and and be really selective and intentional with like, who are you letting into your space and have access to your energy? Um, and because safe relationships is like everything to being able to take risks and change and grow and integrate and all of that. Sometimes it's, it's a coach or a therapist is our first step to that safe relationship. Um, if there's none accessible or you haven't built any yet, I certainly had to let go of almost a whole like community I was involved with for almost two decades of my life. Um, because at, at least just where I'm at and, um, the community was 
just not in alignment with my values. And I had known that for a really long time. And then it just got to a point where I was like, okay, I cannot. And, and it was, and there's grief in that, right? When we're letting go of whether it's actual communities or jobs or organizations or relationships, which I've seen so many people let go of these things, um, but also letting go of old ideas, letting go of, of programming and and conditioning that we thought we needed to keep us safe. And I see this with so many clients where even like what their parents did and thought and taught them (laughs) was going to like help them be happy and be safe. They're like, no, actually I'm like miserable and I don't want to sit in this cubicle for 30 more years. (laughs) I'm going to, I have a client that took a, a pay cut for a bunch less stress job um, that wasn't going to require a bunch of overtime. And now she like sits her butt down after work because she has the time and the energy and she writes and she's finishing up her book that she's been putting off forever. Um, so yeah, folks are, are just, I think, being called into so much. And some people are saying yes, and some people are saying no and digging their feet in <laughs> for sure. Um but to, yeah, living in more alignment with their values. And we just had this beautiful, like, Venus retrograde, right, that was, like, the end of 2021 and where we all got to really kind of look at, okay, I've learned these things. I'm saying this is what I believe, but how am I really embodying it and practicing it? And now is the time to actually roll up our sleeves. And for me, that's come up in interesting ways. Like, am I really keeping boundaries with myself with how much I'm on social media or how late I'm sending emails or um, am I really speaking up and speaking my truth? Am I really, really walking my talk is, is what I'm trying to say. Right. And, and feeling so um, called into that. And, you know, we see through, I think a lot of, especially in the online space, it feels like the, the bro marketing, like just scaling forever, like people having these huge businesses, um, but they're just building through affiliate. And like, once you actually get in the door, like what they're offering isn't high touch. It's very cookie cutter, like all of that. Um, I think people are seeing through a lot of that too (laughs) in, in the online space. And, and I think you, I mean, I've looked at your programs. Um, I know you have some self-study course, but like your, your, larger containers, you still are very hands-on with your people. And I'm the same way. Um, and yeah, cause people are like, okay, like enough with, with the BS, you know, we're, we're just done. Amen. Yeah. I know for me, like I also enrolled in a lot of those cookie cutter approaches because same. it was a, it was a shiny, shiny object. Mm-hmm. 100%. <laughs> You know what I mean? And I've gotten to the place now because of doing so much work on myself where I don't blame myself for that. Mm -hmm. And I was telling my aunt, you know, like the, the things that I've navigated through, whether it was like getting caught up in that or like getting caught up in false light, like not really in alignment with like the divine path I'm here to be in. I don't blame myself for that because I've also understood that I've I've had to go through that to have a deeper level of discernment. So I also yeah. know what not to do. And yes. I think sometimes that's what the investments can be as well. Like we think we're going to invest in this coach because they have like multiple six-figure months and I want that, right? And I'm not saying yeah. like you can't have that, but – is it the shiny object that you are uh, signing up for that person or is it actually the integrity of the person that you're, you want to connect with and you feel seen and heard and respected Mm -hmm. and you understand that like they're here for you. The reason why, like I had a lot of the, the self-study courses for a bit was because I was sick. So I made all of those at like a discounted rate. Um, but yeah. now and, that and for I'm, a certain investment level, like that's fine. Yeah. But when you're charging twenty five hundred, you know, and up, and you're mm-hmm. like, and it's a self study experience, um, it's kind of like, mm, you know, and it's mm-hmm. not to say it's not completely invalu- invaluable, um, but again, like we've said, what's it's all the about integrity of you creating 
Yeah. What's the what's the integrity of you creating that? And I think we're also mm-hmm. living in a time where we're craving more connection. Yeah. Um, that's what the Aquarian age is about, right? Yeah. It's not just about, again, the shiny object. And, you know, I've spent, you know, well, tens of thousands of dollars mm-hmm. in the high tens <laughs> mm-hmm. in these coaches and experiences over the years. Didn't also integrate because I was like, I need to jump in the next one. I need to jump in the next one. I need to jump in the next one. And then I just, mm-hmm. there were multiple times where I didn't really feel seen um, or heard or, um, appreciated by those coaches. So those experiences, while it was like a pricey investment, it taught me what not to be. Yeah. And I think that's okay to also embrace is like, I don't see it necessarily as a quote unquote mistake. Um, there was just a different outcome than what I initially thought going in that has made me wiser, again, more compassionate, um, a better understanding and more clarity on how I actually want to be and how I actually want to lead Um, Mm -hmm. and forgiving myself if I ever fell into that cookie cutter. Well, this is what I need to be. Obviously this is why I'm enrolling in this person with this person Um, Mm -hmm. because then I had a lot of self doubt um, or was uh, placing my worthiness in something that wasn't actually of integrity or genuinely important. And I think that's the other piece we need to really recognize and honor as well. Yeah. And it's interesting how we put on this extra layer of judgment around it. Um, You know, thank goodness I went to community college before I went to a a four-year school because I changed my major four freaking times. And it wasn't like, oh, one class I'm going to change my mind. It's like, oh, no, I have like three associates (laughs) and really, you know, like bumbled around and learned a lot. But when we hear someone say, oh, I changed my major, we're not like, oh, my gosh, wow. Like that just says a whole lot about you as a person. You suck. Right. And but then, you know, we have these experiences in an entrepreneurial journey and we can be hard on ourselves when it's like, again, so it's a learning experience and we we can change our thought that we're having or that story that we're going to tell ourselves about our experience. Yeah. Yeah. So appreciate you highlighting that because I definitely <laughs> have been there. <laughs> yeah. I think I think the greatest spiritual journey is becoming an entrepreneur mm. because if you're going to be like an entrepreneur of integrity and hold that container for people, yeah. you've got to really uh, – be aware of the container that you're building first within yourself. Mm. So to me, it's like the ultimate Mm -hmm. spiritual experience is becoming a solopreneur who is choosing to build a business of integrity, of intention with purpose and not just because I want to make a ton of money, which I think a lot of that mindset is also shifting. I think that was a lot of the Piscean way of building business. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the other thing too, you know, we switched into the Aquarian age in 2012 and there's still been some residual, like you can't just switch from one era to another, like just when 12, 21, 12, it's done. Like there's residual cleanup, (laughs) <laughs> right there's an integration yeah. part of like that the as Tony well and the Marie Forleo stuff started in like 2010 I think so that was still you know rolling yeah and, and oh, I definitely of- was a b-school student so yeah. uh <laughs> yeah and you know yeah. like kudos to them like they do you but um again it was just like I refuse to have a business where my clients are just another number And I had to go through those experiences to realize, like, I was just another number. Yeah. You know? Yep. And it's like people want connection if they're, especially I think people are being more um, conscious of how they're spending their money as well, especially after what's been going on. And I think people want to spend money on people that they really feel like they're, they value and respect and not just be like, Oh, here's another certification on the wall. Like I graduated from B school. Like Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot more. And again, I think that's part of the dangling shiny object um, that we need to also be discerning of because to me, Mm -hmm. it's like, you can have like a blue check mark next to your name on social media and have a program 
whatever. But like, if you don't and you have like a couple thousand followers, whatever, and you have like a strong community of people who support you, like, that's amazing. Like you're actually cultivating like a genuine connection where it's not like a, um, like a ranking because you have this many followers or this many people like, I mean, and I'm not, I'm not bashing that, but it's like Mm -hmm. you even starting from the bottom and having Mm -hmm. like a strong community of people who support you, like you're making an impact on those people's lives as well. And I Mm -hmm. think that's, those are like, those are the people that will really respect you in a way of you made an impact and you supported them and you helped change your life. And there'll always be a deeper level of gratitude for those intimate Mm -hmm. containers. And I think that's the thing that, again, we're seeing more of. And I think as more and more people embrace what they've conquered, what they've overcame, um, their passions, and this is why niching is really important in business as well. Um, Mm -hmm. Because you can go, like, if you're, for instance, helping people specifically with trauma, inner child healing work, and the nervous system to help change and become aware and deeper in that relationship, that's a niche, like people who are like looking for that specific thing rather than this broader picture. Like Mm -hmm. there's going to be such a deeper level of respect of like, wow, you really helped me. There's people there that are helping that were bankrupt, overcame money challenges. And now they're helping people with like, what's the story? What's the drive? What's the, Mm -hmm. what have you, what have you conquered and overcome and Mm -hmm. you're living, you know, the, the result of Mm -hmm. the devotion that you put in Mm -hmm. and you want to share from that space of overflow, I think those are going to be the future leaders that are really going to be successful in business and in the world from here on out. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, all the way from, you know, people are really reevaluating their values and even their relationship to their money and how they spend their money. It's like North node and Taurus, like, you know, that we've been in for a couple of months now. Um, and, um, looking at like what, yeah, like what really matters is it, Oh, so this person has a blue check mark or, you know, 400,000 followers. Does that automatically mean that they are, that they get results? that they care that like my life is going to be transformed. And again, it's not like all or nothing. Um, And it also doesn't mean, you know, you can have less than 10,000 followers and have a million dollar business. Like I know coaches that, you know, have um, very small followings and they're so clear in their message and sharing their story and how they serve. Right. It's like their people are just like, Oh my gosh, I've been waiting for you. Um, and even myself, like I have made as, as much money as, um, with a third of the followers that I have now in, in a month. Um, so yeah, all of that, like shiny stuff, um, even like metrics and things like that. Um, I think as, as a business owner, I've had to detach from a lot of that too, and know that, um, gosh, like my last handful of clients, like they weren't people that were really liking my post or commenting or, you know, they were like the silent creepers, but they're really watching. Am I walking my talk? They're really listening to my story. They're really seeing like, and when I get on a consultation call with someone and they're like, oh my gosh, I feel like I know you, (laughs) or I feel like you're speaking right to me. Then I'm like, yes, I'm, I'm doing what I need to do to stay connected to my authentic power, um, to create that like space for, for them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why, you know, it's coming full circle right now. Before we push record, I was talking with Cassandra on how I deleted my, or I'm, I've closed out my Instagram that had over 10,000 followers Mm -hmm. and I've started, I started from to zero. So right now I have like 500 followers and, uh, it's uh it's one of the ultimate ego deaths in uh, the technological age because we associate so much of our value and our worth to how many followers we have because it's just been a condition that's been going on how many followers what's the blue check mark um, all that bullshit and I was you know going through my own rebirth and uh, my own health issues and burning all the books that I did and 
you were talking earlier about walk the talk. I literally went on live and that was the theme of my <laughs> live was called walk the talk. Ah! And, <laughs> and to me, it's just been like, I, I don't mind starting from scratch because I'd rather have a, an engaged audience mm -hmm. than just um, a number. And that was the thing that was so wild to see was that here I had like over 10,000 followers, but my story engagement or my post engagement was almost the mm -hmm. same as yeah. my 500 followers. So I don't know mm -hmm. if necessarily there was a shadow ban with my old account because I was speaking the truth and like sharing things mm -hmm. that was going on. Um, you know, I don't know what it is, but I just, there was, it wasn't making sense anymore. And I think that's, it takes a courageous person to also, um, get radically honest about what's working and what isn't. And sometimes we need to look at those metrics, not, not necessarily vanity, but energetic metrics is the thing that just came to me right now. It's like, for, if with what I'm putting out, am I actually receiving, like, is there a reciprocity? And I know for me, as someone who had a lot of trauma with her sexuality, some, a lot of trauma with um, my femininity, receiving was hard for me and I was an over giver and like making sure everyone else's needs were met before me and I saw how that played mirrored in mm -hmm. social media as well so I think that was mm -hmm. the other piece as to wow. why I closed out uh, my old account because I'm like if I'm putting out but there isn't an, an equal give and take like that's a toxic relationship mm -hmm. and it took time to admit that it took time to um take that leap but once I got there the the burden that comes off as well is such a release mm. and so I mean they're like how how things are happening on social media it can also reflect what's happening in our personal lives and I think that's the other adjustment that we've had mm. to really um, navigate through is like now technology is part of our lives and it isn't going anywhere and I think that's mm -hmm. what as a millennial like I think that's been the blessing of my generation, you know, is that we are the last generation to remember what life was like pre and post technology. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why we have more of a responsibility to make sure that um, we're bridging, we're the bridge between the two. Like there's things from the Piscean age that make sense where technology wasn't the end all be all like seeing mm -hmm. kids use their phones nonstop and like, mm -hmm. but disconnecting from nature around, like these are things that from our ancestors that I think we also need to make sure we're honoring mm -hmm. and keeping with reverence and respect yeah. um, so that we also don't become codependent on technology. And if we are, what in other areas in our lives is there also codependent, uh, codependent behaviors? Mm, oh my gosh. I feel like that could be like a whole workshop. <laughs> your, you know, your relationship with social media or technology is a mirror of your relationship with yourself and all your, or uh, your other relationships in your life. Um, yeah. I'm like thinking, oh, I definitely have had like an, a, an avoidant attached relationship with social media mm -hmm. at times when I'm not regulated and resourced enough for sure I'm just like peace mm -hmm. <laughs> and um and then get into that like yeah a, a lot of those thoughts that I've had in human relationships with mm -hmm. with social media um yeah yeah I get that and that's why like I'm grateful for conversations like this because this is how we like spread that seed and like have people think about it. Mm -hmm. um, I want I wanted to cultivate this space as for people to think outside the box and to reflect and to integrate, you know, the medicine that comes through. And that's why I even I'm very discerning on who comes on here mm -hmm. um, because I. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to create a space of integrity. And if I don't feel aligned with the person um, that I have on this podcast, like I don't care what their numbers or followers, whatever. Like if I, if I resonate with you and your medicine and your message, mm -hmm. let's have this conversation. Mm -hmm. And again, I just think uh, that's been my prayer and my driving force is 
if I choose to live a life of integrity myself, it's important to make sure that's also trickled into my business and my various social platforms. Mm -hmm. And like you said, like if you feel out of alignment piece, like I'm the queen of talking about social media sabbaticals. (laughs) And um, I think it's important to know that like when you need to take that time away from technology, guess what? It's still going to be there when you come Mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. And there'll be more clarity on to how you can serve better because you're not caught up in the overconsumption. You've been able to integrate um, what, you know, what you've, what you've seen, um, what you've overconsumed, what worked, what didn't. And then from that, how can you choose to be part of the solution? How can you Mm. choose to do better? And Mm. how can you choose to do it where you're, you are taking care of of you and your needs. And I think that's all, doesn't matter if it's, you know, in relationship. And that's been the big piece for me as well. Like Mm. I pushed away the love of my life 10 years ago because I knew I needed to heal myself. I couldn't share from that overflow. Um, And I wanted to clear out my childhood trauma and Mm. karma and ancestral karma, I should say, and that debris so that it didn't get passed down to my children. Mm. Um, And just being able to be open with saying that and not have any shame in that as well. There's choices behind why we do what we do. And when you can have the courage to commit to why you do what you do and Mm -hmm. you do it with integrity, you do it with conviction, you do it with that being your focus, Mm -hmm. what you can do in the world is beyond your wildest dreams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you are such a beautiful embodiment of that. I mean, from ditching your old social media and starting over to releasing that relationship so you can focus on you. I mean, like, you know, you've made some really big, hard decisions and I, and I resonate and appreciate that, you know, um, as somebody who got divorced with three kids under five and people were looking at me like, what? I don't understand. Like your life looks really cute on Facebook. Like my own family didn't support it and get it. Um, and yeah, so I just want to like say, I really, really appreciate that about you so much. And I also feel like so much of this conversation, I keep getting this image of like a wave, almost like a second wave of business online marketing and and running a business online, like all that stuff we talked about, like, you know, like that's, I mean, it's still operating and there's still people that are like, you know, um, like we, me and you both, you know, are, are signing up and, and being in those systems. Um, but that time is over and I've always you know since I found your podcast years ago and all that seeing you as like a like a leader like an innovator like someone that has you know just like foresight um and is an early adapter and um yeah and I really appreciate like this this conversation because it feels like we're kind of on the crest of that second wave and you know you're really shining the light there so thank you thank you Angel yeah I mean I love being that early adapter. My my marketing professor when I was in college, he called me the marketing machine. And uh, he still has me come in and teach his university classes and stuff like mm-hmm. once a semester. And I just, I want to be able to use these tools to be part of the solution. And like us individually, we need to adapt to these changes and feel safe to adapt and to think outside of the box. And again, that goes back to what we were talking about earlier about the safety um, the trust, the uh, surrender aspect, knowing mm-hmm. that if this is the work that we're here to do, like we will be divinely protected and divinely guided. Um, but you have to, where is your faith, right? Like Ooh. you have to embrace that. You have to honor that and give yourself permission to go into that space of total surrender um, while also making sure you're nourishing yourself, honoring your boundaries, um, having your non-negotiables and cultivating that sacred space within and without. Yeah. Well, I don't know about anybody listening, but I needed this <laughs> conversation today. Um, wow. Like, yes, yes, yes. I'm right there. And, and it's interesting because you're like, okay, yeah, I'm trusting, I'm in faith and like things work out and then life happens and you get off your center or 
you're be you you know want to expand in some way in your business and that takes you off your center and so I've definitely <laughs> been in like that that you know that low part of that cycle for the last few months myself of like okay I'm like willing to believe this is going to work out I'm still showing up in faith um and I've been here before and I'm sure it won't be the last time so I really needed that medicine today thank you <laughs> oh I love you thank you for having this conversation with me like I said this is a, a dream come true to have this chat with Aww. you because I've resonated with your work for years and you know we were supposed to have this conversation like in October and then I got really sick and life happened and it was because that's part of the surrendering as well, mm -hmm. trusting in the this or something better. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, this conversation has felt like the something better. Um, and I, like I said, this is this is the first podcast I've had uh, with a guest since my last episode that I had that was like really intense. Um, so it feels just so great to be back here and to be able to have this conversation and to see oh. what medicine came through. It's been such an honor, Cassandra. And Thank you. Same. Deeply, deeply honored. <laughs> Before we close out, I want to, I want to oh, do okay. some lightning round questions. Ready? What, what does sovereignty mean to you? Um, I think of sovereignty as like I get the image of the emperor card in the tarot. It's like I am the the king, the queen, the ruler of my domain. Um, so it's energetic um, in a lot of ways. Like I say what gets to come out and I say what comes in to, to my energy and to my space. Um, I get to observe myself in my life and, you know, from my place of my higher self, my adult self however you want to call it and, and rule from, from that space. Yeah. Mm. I needed that medicine. Thank you. That was telling me to keep going, bitch. <laughs> what was the one concert that you, you can say was like a game changer for you? Um, oh my gosh. Okay. Um, well I saw, um, gosh, Okay. Well, there, I have to say too. I mean, the first one is my first concert I went to because like who doesn't forget? And I was in junior high and aging myself in 1994 and I saw No Doubt and Weezer opened and um, my best friend's parents took me and I'd never done anything like that in my life. Um, and then there was, I used to do a lot of like hardcore shows and mosh pitting and I had purple hair and more band t-shirts and studded belt. I was like very emo in, you know, 2003, 2004. And um, I was in a mosh pit and I was like six months into my trauma healing journey and really just discovering I was a very angry person. I didn't realize I was. Um, and it was like a great way to get out a lot of aggression, being able to push and shove on people. Um, and then I broke someone's finger and, um, and I felt really bad about it. And I was like, this is new. Um, and, and I would, and it was just like this moment of like realizing, cause if you had asked me before I started my healing journey, six months earlier, I told you I'm the nicest person. I have no resentment, no anger. Like if somebody doesn't like me, I will go make them like me. Cause I need everyone to like me. And it was just this like powerful moment of realizing like, wow, I have so much anger and so much rage um, and seeing that in myself and seeing myself and, and that it was okay. Like I knew it was like, okay, wow. Like I've got some work to do around this. So yeah, kind of a weird answer, but I'll never forget that. <laughs> I love that. I, I believe there's, there's deep medicine in music, especially live music. So mm -hmm. what an initiation to, to recognize like, all right, this is mm -hmm. the time to go. I love that. What would you say was the book that really shifted for you, like your favorite book? There's many. Um, I want to say Living Buddha, Live a Living Christ by Thich Nhat Hanh. Um, I was early in my healing journey and was, you know, all through high school and even part of early college, like very 
like born again Christian, taught Sunday school, vacation Bible school, like the whole locked myself with other teens in the church and read the whole Bible all weekend, that, that whole thing. Um, and I was really struggling with, with that and with spirituality and religion. And that book like made it possible for me to expand my concept of spirituality and and my connection with the divine, like beyond that, the very fundamentalist experience that I had growing up. Wow. Beautiful answer. Thank you for sharing that. What would you say to younger self, your younger Cassandra, younger Cassandra today? Um, well, it depends how young. Um, I think the, the prevailing message is like, it's okay to be fucking bossy. And it's okay to be smarter than everybody else. And it's okay to be like, you know, like, like big, like, it's okay. Yeah. And, and that affected me academically in, you know, by sexual relationships. It's just like, there was like nothing wrong with me, but it was like all the programming about like how someone raised as a woman, like should be. Um, and I would just say like, no, just, just be like the boys. <laughs> like, <suck it. laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. Stop playing small bitch. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> what last little nugget of wisdom would you want to share as we close out this conversation? Um, just that whatever you're feeling like is wrong with you or that needs to be changed about you, um, like it's not wrong. And it's actually like not something that you need to force into changing. Um, if it's not serving you, it's it's anymore. It's it's because it did serve you at some, for some part of your life, maybe a lot of your life. And where whatever you're you're going through physically, mentally, emotionally, like it it makes sense. Like there there's a reason and there's purpose. Um, and it's actually turning towards that part with gratitude and love and compassion that's going to enable it to shift. Love that. And where can we find more of you? Yeah. So um, I hang out on Instagram every day um, and I'll give you the last put in the show notes, but it's um, Instagram.com um, at change with Cassandra. Um, my website, CassandraSolano.com. Um, I have free guides to help you on your healing journey there. Um, I have a whole video library there um, and you can, you know, join my newsletter and be the first to know about offers and programs and all that good stuff there on my website. Amazing. Go follow Cassandra. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for going there with me today. Like I said, such an honor to be here with you, such an mm -hmm. honor to have you be my first conversation. I feel since. really privileged. Thank you so much. I'm just, I'm so grateful for the medicine that came through from, you know, us coming together. And I know it's here to help so many people. So if you're tuning in and you want to learn more about Cassandra's medicine, go check out Cassandra's Instagram. All the links are in the show notes. And Again, just following what she said, what they said here is just like, I just want you to understand that what you do, what you've conquered, <laughs> what you've navigated through, there is a divine purpose for it. And you have the ability to revolutionize the world with your medicine. Mm. You have the ability to make an impact and the very things that you've been able to overcome that is how that's the legacy you have the ability to truly leave behind and this is how we revolutionize the world with our medicine so thank you again cassandra i appreciate you thank you everyone for tuning in and we'll be seeing more of you soon take care